Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your boy, Mr. Las Vegas. And we at it again. This Prison Chronicles, volume 11. Before we get into it, y'all already know the saying. I need y'all to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. That way, every time your boy drop, you alerted. You dig what I'm saying? So... Shit, right now I'm on the road, so, you know, the show must go on. Like always, I ain't able to be uh, at the house, so I'm on the road. But, uh, man, Warm Springs. We at Warm Springs, man. For those that don't know, Warm Springs is hella far up north. You literally in the boondocks, man. And if you ain't got no 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 family support, that, that especially the niggas that be chasing down them visits, uh, yeah, you're going to be mad as a motherfucker when they move you up north, right? Now, I'm a, up north, you know, us niggas, we call it Hicktown because the majority on them yards is white boys. So you could be in some fucked up situations where you can get killed, you know what I'm saying? And uh, on one of my later volumes, I'm going to talk about how some shit went on uh, up north, man, and... Uh, Niggas ain't who they say they is. Now, Warm Springs was a different yard, man. It was real small, and it was a uh, it was it was awarded so many luxuries. Far as if you want a program and different things of that nature, that's a place to go, right? I graduated from the Phoenix program there, and I was in the four man sales. Now, the four man sales was like penthouses; they was hella big. A bunk bed on this side, a bunk bed on this side. You know what I'm saying? Big sales. Uh, but, the you know, uh, it was just lovely there because the yard was wide open. And we would get fundraisers, and the fundraisers was unlimited. I'm talking about you can spend 10000 20000 whatever you want at the fundraiser. And the fundraiser was no joke because they had, like, Costco fundraisers where niggas could buy supplements, creatine, pies, bags of candy, uh, 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 cakes, uh, zoom zooms and wham whams, motherfucking, uh, bags of snicker bars, you name it. And you, in bags of Gatorades and water, you name it, sodas, everything. And what niggas would do, we would buy 15, 16, you know, niggas would buy thousands of dollars of that shit and stack up in his room. Especially the sodas and the shit that don't get old. Them sodas and them candies and all that. Nigga, stack that shit up and sit around. And let all them niggas eat that shit up. And make a killing off all that shit that don't is not sold on the yard. And the fundraiser would always be like every six months. Like twice a year, right? So, you know, them niggas will run through their shit in, in one month. And it's over with, right? So, man, we're going to get into it, man. Warm Springs was also a yard where a lot of wanksters was at. A lot of wannabe tough guys was at, right? And you could tell they was, you know, a real nigga recognized real, man. It was a lot of wannabe tough motherfuckers at Warm Springs. But it also was a bunch of, it was some dangerous motherfuckers there, too. Now, you know, you fucking with white boys and different things of that nature, you gonna run into some UFC fighters. That's what's up north. A lot of UFC fighters and MMA fighters, they up north. And they the type of motherfuckers that'll walk you to sleep. And if you just a average street nigga and, and, and you used to just boxing and shit, you really don't want no problems with no MMA fighter, especially in prison. And you going up in there and locking the cell, your ass might be in a world of trouble. And uh, I done seen it happen many, many a times. So what we going to talk about on this one, we're going to talk about a bunch of shit. But on this one, man, we talking about this paper, right? So you see this paper, man? So right here, if I turn this over, I would cut this down the middle right here like this. And then I would go, I would cut right there across right there. So what this would be is six stamps in the penitentiary, right? So let me give you an example, right? 
how niggas is feeding their family and how niggas is getting real money. So you see how I split that up? I put that on top like that, right? And this just ironing. You know, this just lets you know how long, how much money I was getting. And this just ironing it. I'll split it up, right? Now, there's six stamps. Now, one of these would go for $50, right? And the game got so shady at Warm Springs and other prisons in Nevada to where you would take this and, and cut it in half because it started getting hard to get. And this half is $50 now, right? So two of these is $100. So I just cut six of these out, right? So right here, right off the jump, you you looking at $600 off that paper I just sent you, right? Now, I was getting pages of this shit, right? Pages. And a nigga was making a killing. Listen, I easily made over 50000 at Warren Springs. I'm not even going to bullshit you, right? Hey, shout out to Do Dirty. Shout out to my nigga Do Dirty, man, from Rolling 60s in Las Vegas. Shout out to Do Dirty, man. Do Dirty push a hard line. And Do Dirty love me to death. That's my nigga, man. Listen, man, I remember I got strength up on a poker table. I had hella money in my room. You know, uh, hella money. You know, probably about six, seven hundred uh, in food, and probably about five, six hundred in stamps. But my nigga do dirty. He had thousands and thousands of dollars of stamps. The nigga has so much money. He he's the do dirty is the coldest poker player that I ever seen in prison ever. Right? I ain't never seen a nigga like him. Right? This nigga had now. I made fifty, sixty thousand. Off selling spice, this nigga probably made a half a million dollars or a million dollars close to it because he's still rocking and rolling right now. And his hustle is cold, man. This nigga, the only nigga I ever seen, nigga, five star loan sharking. Whatever amount of money you wanted, you can get from Do Dirty. That's what type of nigga he was, right? He called to the streets, get your cash app, you two, three hundred, whatever you wanted. Oh, and uh, he wasn't worried about you running or leaving or none of that. You know what I'm saying? He was a cold motherfucker and still is, right? So the spice epidemic came, man. It was off the hook. Niggas was desperate, doing all kind of shit, right? So when it first came, it was a cool, you know, I never did it. But, you know, guys was having like a weed high at first, right? And then you can tell the people that were sending it in when we was buying it, they start perfecting it. So when they start perfecting it, it turned from a weed high to a hair run high, right? And you watched how the whole yard shift because they was hooked on like some hair run, right? And you can tell the niggas that was strung out. You can tell the niggas that was balling. And you can tell the niggas that didn't do no drugs and it was very i would say five percent of us didn't do no drugs and we was having money the other uh 90 percent was strung out then that other five percent was just squares they didn't do nothing they stayed out the way and mind their business right so you would see niggas man this is a everyday thing everybody that been in nevada prison system would tell you you would see niggas drooling, you know what I'm saying? Hitting, hitting spice, having epis, niggas going crazy, niggas doing whatever they can just to get high. And what they would do, they would put, uh, 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 they would take the cocks wet, they would break down, let's tell you how motherfuckers was tweaking, they would break down the cable wires, right? And you know the little particles that's in the cable wire, they would use them as little things to roll the little paper on, right? And connect it to a battery and they would use a straw to hit it. And one little hit and them niggas will go crazy, right? So one Pacific day, shout out to my nigga Trap, right? From that coast. One Pacific day, we down there gambling, kicking it. 
So I started cooking some food. We cooking fried rice and all that shit. So Trap come down to the cell. We down there kicking it, hanging out. Next thing you know, we go, he helping me cook the shit. So I go take the shit to the microwave. We standing from the microwave, right? So we hear some, huh, huh. You're like, man, we looking like, what the fuck? So we look down the hallway. The hallways is so, so, so close together that literally I can put my hands out, trap or tell you. I can put my hands out and touch both of the walls. That's literally how short, narrow the walls was, right? And everybody in big ass cells in the hallway. So we look down there, it's a nigga yelling. So all of a sudden we see him fall to the ground and he's having an epi, right? And next thing you know, some niggas try to help him. Hey, get up. Try to grab him in his in the room. So when they try to grab a nigga in the room, the nigga turned into an incredible hawk. I swear to God, I've never seen a nigga so strong. And these big niggas trying to grab him. That nigga turned into an incredible hawk. And that nigga said, ah, <coughs> You niggas can't fuck with me. I'm ready to die. And that nigga started just bailing down the hallway. Beating on his chest, right? Me and Trap, we on gangster mode. We, we, you know, we ready to perform. I look at Trap. He got that look in his eyes. I tell Trap, hold on, homie. Let's get out this nigga way. Because he having an epi. It make no sense for us to clown. Let's get out this nigga way. Because I'm like, if Trap hit him, I got to roll. You know what I'm saying? It's just protocol. I'm rolling. Nigga win, lose, or draw. And that nigga don't want to see me in trap. We was finna put that nigga in the hospital, for sure, right? So that nigga bails down the hallway. So all of a sudden, you hear the CO saying, get out, get out. He look at the COs and say, what? And charge at the COs. And, st and, and stole on one of the COs. And another CO, this motherfucker had to been about 6'8", 380, 390 pounds. Stole on him, dropped him, right? This nigga hit the ground, popped right back up, started trying to fight. So now the, pro, they, the, the CO's fighting with him. They pulling the nigga dreads out, all the shit, right? So they make all us get down. They spray gas up in the unit. And uh, <laughs> so there you had it. So we all lock down all the shit. They take that nigga to the hole, right? So weeks and weeks pass. The same old shit, the same old shit. So I end up getting put up in the motherfucking Phoenix program. This on my way out. I had to, I, I've been down like 12 years and some change. So I'm about to graduate this program, get some extra time off my sentence and get out. So I'm in this program, man. We kicking it. It's lovely. Everybody know everybody. Woo, 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 woo. And it's this little nigga, man. He, he, you just can't. He's, he's like the, he's a youngster, and you can't tell him nothing. He the toughest motherfucker. He got a chip on his phone. He always getting into it with people, right? So I seen this nigga from a mile away. So I would always say, it's a youngster. I'ma stay away from this little nigga. But everybody that know me in the penitentiary know that I'm a phone bandit. I beat that phone up. I lives on that phone. I stayed on the phone every day, all day for 12 years uh, uh, in the penitentiary. If I wasn't on the phone, I was working out, uh, 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 knocking the CO bitch, uh, 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 in some shit with some of my homeboys, shooting dice, or making pruno. And once I get through making the pruno, I roll that, wrap that shit up, put it up under the bed, get right on the phone. Everybody that know me, it's not one motherfucker that been to penitentiary and say, nah, that nigga lying. I'm on that phone every day, all day for 12 and a half years straight, right? In another three and a half years, I was on that phone every day. It's not one day I wasn't on the phone. That's just how I did my time, right? I don't know about nobody else. And, and, and the time flew by like that, right? Because I stayed connected to the streets. I stayed connected to the game. So I'm watching this little nigga, man, and I'm like, this little nigga going to be a problem because he's a phone bandit. He's a phone shark, and he's a little old nigga, man, and uh, I'm like, okay, you know what I'm saying? So one Pacific day, we had rotation on the phone where we had a list because in the program, they was janky. They just had one phone down to each unit. 
all these people, you put one phone down a unit, so you you trying to create a problem. You know what I'm saying? So I see the nigga always on the phone. I'm like, okay, this nigga getting in my way. But I ain't saying nothing. The nigga just got here. We been here. So I'm trying to let the nigga know. You okay, man? You got to fall in line. Gorilla Fresh in the unit. You know what I'm saying? e -Loke in the unit. You know what I'm saying? Out there at ABM. Uh, Gorilla Fresh out of Oakland. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, it's hella reputable motherfuckers in the unit. Right? a loco in the unit. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to spare the nigga. I'm trying to spare the nigga, right? The nigga just keep getting in the way. So one Pacific day, I see the nigga get on the phone, hang up, talk again. I go right by him. Hey, let me get after you. You know, I ain't tripping, nigga. I see you do, do it, getting your issue. He's like, all right. So now I'm on post for the phone. So now the nigga hangs up and calls again. Why, why, why did he do that? Right? I don't know why he did that. So I'm like, hey, my nigga, you got to hang that up. I'm after you. So he like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm taking care of some business right now. I'm like, hey, bro, I don't give a fuck about you taking care of no business. You get back in line after me, then you can get on there and take care of your business, nigga. I say, nigga, ain't no nigga uh, uh, family more important than mine. You got your issue. Now it's my turn to get my issue. He like, yeah, man, you know, uh, you know, I'm Gerson, this, 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 this. And he not really from, you know, I know all the real niggas from Gerson. You know what I'm saying? He just a little follow behind. Motherfucker, you ain't no certified nigga out there, G. I fuck with all the certified niggas out there, G. I grew up around them, been around them my whole life. So I'm like, okay, here he go. I'm like, so I'm trying to spare the little nigga. He a little nigga. And, and, and everybody that know, nigga, I'm on hub, I'm lifting Three, three, three eighty-five on the yard, nigga. I'm squatting, nigga. Four something, nigga. I'm lifting up. I'm dead. I'm dead lifting seven something. Everybody on the yard know I'm curling nineties. If I'm lying, I'm dying. I still curl nineties right now to this day. Everybody know. Y'all see the video on my YouTube, man. I'm barehanding four eighty-five. I'm barehanding that. That shit ain't nothing, right? So. I'm like, all right, man, whatever, man. He was like, yeah, because we can get down. I'm like, who are you talking to? Now he make me force my hand. I, it's, you a little dude. You know what I'm saying? You a kid to me. Nigga, I'm raised in the penitentiary. I'm built for this shit, right? So I'm like, who are you talking to? I'm like, little dude. You don't want Nigga, I ain't no little dude, nigga. We can get down, nigga. Yeah, that's what I thought. I say, what you mean what you thought? He was like, yeah, like I said, we can get down. I say, go up in the room. He say, no, nah, you go up in the room. I'm like, I say, go up in the room. You ain't going to go up in the room? He say, no, nah, you go up in the room. I say, okay, we playing kid games, man. So I calmly, all these niggas' name I just named, they was there, they'll tell you. So I calmly walk up in the room. I'm like, this a little kid. So I got to give it to him. He has some heart. This little nigga, he, right? He has some heart. So I go up in the room, right? So he come in. And he hesitated to shut the door. I say, shut the door. He say, shut it for what? I say, you want to get down? Shut the door. I say, man, we ain't going to do nothing when we got all everybody in our business, man. Just shut the door. Now, in my mind, I'm not going to punch him. I'm not going to hit him because I'm going to break something. I'm going to hurt him bad, right? He, like, you got to understand, this This is a this is a little kid. He frail. He, he He's not lifting no weights. He's not built like that. So I'm trying to spare him. And he wouldn't let me spare him. You know what I'm saying? He just kept pushing the line, kept pushing the line. So I say, okay, I'm finna get a nigga a lesson, a penitentiary lesson. And when he snap up out of it, I'm gonna tell you. Now, this why you don't go up in the room with niggas, right? This is what I'm saying in my head. So he shut the door. So when he shut the door, you can see it in his eyes. He's scared as a motherfucker. I say, come on, throw a punch, right? I say, throw a punch. So he put his dukes up. I say, come on, throw a punch. He tried to throw a punch. Listen, I'm telling you, everybody, it was niggas on the door. I bullshit you not. He throw the punches. I walk right through it and look him dead in his eye and grab him by his neck. Right? When I grab him by his neck, I pick him up off his feet. I swear to God, he dangling. I pick the nigga up off his feet. Choke him out. He go to sleep. 
I'm talking about, listen, this is like 20 seconds, man, or less. I swear to God. Everybody was there to tell you, right? So when the, the, the nigga's trying to come to, I say, look, you don't go in the room with anybody, homie, especially no nigga that told you he been down 13 years, a de over a decade and some change because it could have went bad for you. I could have been a predator, bro. You could have got raped or anything. I say, I don't get down like that. I say, I spared your life, my nigga. I say, sometimes you got to humble yourself, right? He like, bitch, get out of my room, my nigga. Get out of my room. I say, you got that, bro. But yeah, humble yourself, man. Bring that shit down. I say, because niggas don't bar none of that. Nigga don't care about no knives or nothing, my nigga. But nigga, that's your last time getting spared, especially about the phone, right? I build up out the, out the uh, nigga room. So I go to the back of the unit. Boo, 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 boo. Because I see it's hell of people out. They know what's just happening, right? So I'm trying to act like it ain't nothing happening. So I go get on the phone, all the shit, right? Boo, 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 boo. Talk on the phone, come back. It's obvious the nigga don't realize what just happened to him. And he realized, okay, I'm in prison. This shit finna be on my name. It's finna get out what just happened to me. So what he does is a five-star PC move, a five-star police move. He come out yelling and screaming. You put your hands on me, nigga. You put your hands on the kid. You put your hands on the kid, nigga. I'm going to kill you. I'm like, hey, calm down for your, for your attractive CO. I say, we're going to holler, bro. Calm down. No, fuck you, you bitch ass, nigga. I'm going to kill your bitch ass, nigga. I'm like, I say, okay, my nigga, but you attracting the police. I don't give a fuck about the police. So guess what happened? The police come out the unit. Police watching. They're like, yeah, you put your hands on me. You choke me out, nigga. I'm talking about straight police move. Elok out right now in Vegas. Gorilla Fresh out right now in Vegas. These are all my niggas. We rocking and rolling. They'll tell you the same motherfucking thing, bro. Hey, Loco out, out here balling. A millionaire in Vegas. These niggas will tell you the same motherfucking thing, right? Uh, 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 my little nigga, uh, 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 newborn from NTG. He out. They'll tell you they was all there trying to stop the shit, right? So the police see it. So what he do is he locked the unit down. I'm like, oh man, it's some bullshit. So we they lock he lock us down. I go up in the room, everybody go in their room. My son is like, man, you good? And he's like, man, that nigga, that's foul. That nigga just did some police shit. I say, man, they finna review the cameras now. Warren Springs full of cameras. They got all them cameras for a reason. They don't got to do no job. They rewind shit and boom. So sure enough, homie, they come right to the door. Hey, Tyler, turn around. I'm like, what? Yeah, you going to the hole. I say, what? Boom, nigga, they come get me. Put the handcuffs on me. Boom, take me to the hole, right? Get to the hole. They tell me, yeah, man, uh, we seen the footage. You went in his room, and uh, we also seen... Uh, uh, we also seen you come up out of there and uh, he was sitting on the ground. I'm like, what? Yeah, we seen all that. And it's crazy because one of the COs I was kind of cool with and when I'm going through the disciplinary shit, he let me look at the video evidence and I'm looking like, oh, wow. You can see the little nigga sitting on the floor and you can see me walking out, right? And uh, he was like, man, listen, you just gonna get a level reduction you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, if you want to go back to the union, you got to wait 90 days to go back to the union. And I'm like, man, ain't this about a bitch, man. I tried to spare this little nigga. And this nigga turned into the to a straight female, to a straight bitch. So the moral of this motherfucking story is don't never take this shit that I'm finna tell you to the streets. We on the streets now. Don't never think because you about the, that life the next nigga is, right? You might be about killing, shooting, fighting or whatever. The next nigga might more than likely ain't going to be. So if you shoot a nigga and he survive, nine times out of ten, he going to tell on you. The other percentage of him not telling on you and it just staying in the street is very rare, especially in this day and time. All these little young young niggas that's walking around with guns that will kill something and all that. They're going to kill something when they got the upper hand. But when you get the upper hand on them, them niggas not going to play the game, fair homie. 
They're going to tell on you. They're going to do all, anything they can to hope that you suffer, especially if they become a victim. A lot of these street niggas will not accept being a victim to anybody. And that's where the problem occurs. So take that with you right now while you're in the streets. And it'll make you move different. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not, it's, it ain't even, the game ain't even fair. It's not even, it's not even, it's not even fair when it comes to anything along those lines. So it don't even be worth it to hurt a motherfucker, man, because you're going to always lose. You hurt a motherfucker and kill him, you lose. If you hurt a motherfucker and he's still alive, you lose because you got the percentage of him, the high percentage of him telling on you or a high percentage of him coming back and coming around and catching you slipping and smoking you. So, man, just try to be humble, man, and try to die in some situations because I've been through some fucked up situations. And some of them I wish I could dodge, but, you know, they happen. I got to live with that. That's why I be on my motherfucking square when I'm out here moving around. And I watch where I go, man. But with that said, Mr. Las Vegas for the record. And I'm out.